welcome back. I'm Chris Trainer, pen tester at Black Hills Information Security. And today we're going to be talking about the burp extension called JSON Web Tokens. If you haven't seen any of our other videos covering burp extensions, there are a few of them out there. You have links that will pop up in the description or somewhere around my head in this video that will direct you to that playlist. Uh, we cover burp extensions in general, some other specific extensions individually, what they do, how they act. Same thing we're going to do with JSON Web Tokens. So check those out too. Okay, so to start things off, we have a virtual machine open up in front of you. We are inside of the uh, Burp Suite Pro uh, extensions tab. We're in the BAP store where it has lists of all of your extensions that are available. Currently pulled up is the topic of the day, JSON Web Tokens. Some description information here that we'll go through. Port Trigger has added estimated system impacts to all of their extensions. This one is low. Gives you a link down at the bottom to the source code for the extension. And if you haven't installed it yet, this reinstall button will just say install. And over on the left hand side is a web application that we're going to be using to demonstrate this extension. And this is the OWASP Juice Shop vulnerable web application that we've talked about in past videos as well. If you've never heard of OWASP Juice Shop, definitely go check it out. It's a great uh, way to get some new challenges, extend your capabilities, and test legally. What is JSON Web Tokens as an extension? As features listed right here on the screen, it's pretty straightforward. It helps you recognize if your web application that you are pen testing or you're building as a developer or testing as a QA person or just using and you're curious on how security works, JSON Web Tokens as an extension will help you recognize when that web application is using what are called JWTs for short. Now, these JWTs can be used for any number of reasons. They're they mostly are used for authentication purposes. They can sometimes contain data that helps the application operate in certain ways at certain permission levels. I'll mention that a little bit later. It'll help you decode the JWT. It'll help automate some attacks on, on web tokens uh, if those vulnerabilities exist for that JWT in the web application. Let's walk through it because talking is boring and demos are a lot more fun and they get to the point. Starting off here, I've got my OWASP juice shop open on the left. I have my Burp Suite Pro open on the right. JWT is one of those extensions that will give you a new tab in the top of your Burp UI. It will start out as blank. It won't have anything there unless you send something there. We're going to jump over to our proxy, to our proxy HTTP history. For the OWASP Juice Shop, I mentioned at the beginning, JWT is typically used for authentication and session tokens. They can be used for authorization. They can be used for all sorts of things. I'm starting off on the left-hand side here with an already authenticated session inside of OWASP Juice Shop. Now, how I got the, the active session inside of this was actually by completing one of the Juice Shop challenges, which is in our SQL Pi burp extension uh, video, which will be linked in the description of this one. So definitely go and check that out. That will help you get to an active session inside of OWASP Juice Shop so that you can play around with these JWTs a little bit. So the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to refresh OWASP Juice Shop. And the first thing that you see over on the right is a whole bunch of requests going by, flying by and doing all sorts of things. And the first thing that's going to jump out at you is to say, why are some of them colored bluish, purple, or however the hue of your screen is right now? And why are them in white? The first and foremost feature of JSON Web Tokens is to identify and flag when a JWT is present in request responses. If it is highlighted, then it contains a JWT. How do you know that? Well, over here in the right hand, you see a comment section. It's very clearly called out. This contains a JWT. So that's something that you want to try to you know, look into. So we're going to select one of these requests. And down here in the request, sure enough, we see our request on the left, the response on the right. If you are logging in from that other video, if you're first getting authentication token, that login request is going to result in a response with a JWT. In this case, we have an active session already, so it is, in, it is being passed back to the server in the request. It's going to be under that token value. So right here is what it was flagging as a JWT Part of it. Now, what is this? It's kind of garbled nonsense, right? This is basically three broken up areas where two of them are base64 encoded values. Normally, what you'd have to do with Burp is you'd have to send this whole chunk over to the decoder, which is right up here, and then manually decode each of those first two parts of a JWT to see their contents. 
JSON Web Tokens extension helps automate that. Highlight your token, right click, go to extensions, JSON Web Tokens, and send that selected text over to that tab to decode. Now, when I click this, it's going to jump us over there automatically. At the very top, there's your JWT. Down below, there it is decoded. I was saying the first two sections of the JWT, they're decoded. I kept saying that. The third section is encoded as well, but it's encoded with a signature is the value. So you don't really get anything out of that. It's more, it's a hash value for the rest of it. Not going to go into how JWTs work, but that's why I was calling that out. Now here, the first part of the JWT is called out as decoded. Those are the headers telling you what it is and what algorithm it was using to sign or to get that hash signature. The payload here is the meat of a JWT. It can contain any values that's defined for that web application by the development team. Typically, this has usernames, emails, things like that. If you want to have a user's name popped up in the top right-hand side when they're logged in, this is a good way to do that. I have seen values inside of this payload section of a JWT that contain the role of that user for that application. If you have that pop up as something in your application, definitely test it using these methods. Because if that server is not doing signature verification of that JWT, you can alter that role as it comes to the client, as it goes to the server using Burp, using this information that we now have. And you can elevate your access in that web application and gain new functionality, new privileges. That's a quick rundown of J JSON Web Tokens extension. Again, we have a lot of videos that are that are going to be coming out around Burp extensions. Some of them are already up. There'll be links to those. Uh, definitely check them out and hope you come back for more. Thanks.